see. the depth gauge on my saw set to one and a half inches, which is exactly what this measurement is here, from the frame rail to the edge of the stake pocket. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the square, we're going to line it up here on our line, as you can see, and we're going to use it as a fit. So we know that our depth is going to be perfect. So anytime you're plunge cutting with any type of saw or any blade, make sure you check the bottom. You know, whether you're cutting into a nice pair of saw horses or maybe even a sacrificial piece of wood or metal, always know what's underneath your cut. So another quick tip, anytime you're slugging a piece of wood like this, it always helps to use the side of your, your hammer here. Instead of just the round face of it, you're going to damage a lot less of the wood. You're spreading out that force across more surface area. And if you have to, you know, use a sacrificial piece here. When you drive these screws in, you don't want to suck them down so deep and so far that you're only getting half of the wood holding potential. Not only that, but you're going to have little puddles every time that it rains, and those little puddles are just going to absorb into that wood and rot that wood out around that screw. If you keep these somewhat flush, that water is going to evaporate out anytime it does rain instead of rot the wood. quite happy with the way this one grabs so we're actually going to pull this down a little bit here you want to maintain consistency all the way down because this is what's setting all of your other boards so I'm at nine and three-eighths 
9 and 3 8 and 9 and 3 8 so I'm holding true and I want to maintain that the whole way down you know another thing that really is noticeable when you first walk up and look at a trailer is the fasteners too if you've got a line of fasteners that looks like a snake it just looks like sloppy workmanship you know you keep your fasteners in a nice straight line that really complements the workmanship really shows that you care so I'm just laying my fasteners out one inch from the end of the board if this was a 2 by 12 I'd be using three fasteners this is a 2 by 8 so I'm just doing two fasteners towards the edges of the board to prevent cupping. So right here I was presented with a small dilemma. Or not even really a dilemma, I knew what I wanted. I wanted my board lines to line up the whole way down the trailer. Well, what that is going to mean is I'm going to have a small filler piece here on each side in addition to a possible filler piece down the center. Now, if that gap in the center is small enough, I'm not going to worry about a filler piece. But I did have to worry about one here. No big deal. I'd rather have the boards line up the whole way down the trailer. It looks a little better in my opinion. Now, in keeping true with the theme here, as far as the paint goes and a lot of this recycled metal on this trailer, I've got some old cans of stain hanging around. I'm going to dump those in this bucket. I've got some boiled linseed here left over from when I did my bed floor. And I've got some lacquer thinner, which is a great um, reducer for these products because it's not going on metal. As you know, I'm not a big fan of using lacquer thinner to um, reduce oil based paint for stains stuff that's going in wood I think it's an okay option we're gonna roll this on in order to keep it off of the metal and really keep it concentrated on the wood so let's get everything combined in here and see what we're dealing with now when I do put on deck sealer I usually just go and buy five gallons of Thompson's water seal I think that's a great product affordable and then apply that every several years with a, uh, a Hudson sprayer, a pump sprayer. You know, a little bit of overspray on the metal, no big deal. Well, with this lacquer thinner in here, I don't want it to soften my paint, so I'm really going to try to keep it under control. And that's why we're going to be rolling it today. And the only reason why we are adding that lacquer thinner is simply to thin this to get it to really bite down in that wood. that'll do it. I'm going to hang on to these just in case I have a little bit of residual. I'm going to store it in those cans. Dollar store whisk. Can't go wrong. OK, 
Okay, let's get to it. Okay, quick change of plan. I'm going to get rid of as much of my stain as I can. This is dark walnut. I think I'm going to be able to do a few applications and get rid of most of this. So, on goes the dark walnut. Now, this was some stuff that I saved from the trash can. Somebody was going to throw it away, and I said, oh, no, I'll use it. And then, go figure, it kicks around my shop for over a year, and I don't use it. So, this is the perfect place to get rid of it just like we did with the old paints you know dump them all in a container put them on normally I'm not a big fan of coloring a deck because the more it fades the harder it is to match and the crappier it looks So this is coat number three going on here and you can see it is really souped on there. So the plan from here is basically to let this soak in for 10 days, uh, maybe two weeks and then we'll come across and pressure wash it because what it's going to do during those two weeks is just collect dust and collect dirt. It's going to look uh, really terrible probably by the end of the two weeks Then we'll come back through and we'll pressure wash it really clean and that will be exactly what we're after at that point. A nice sealed surface that is not too slick and should last us a long time. Well, that's pretty much it. There's a few things that I will be addressing down the road. One is, I think I'm gonna put the spare tire underneath here. What I'm considering using is one of those strap winches right here, and then a pulley under the trailer that pulls the tire up. I, with all my measuring, it looks to me like the tire would not hang below that frame rail right there. And that would be a perfect way to kind of keep it up and underneath there, out of the sunlight and secure. And then you would basically just need a lug wrench to lower it down. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. The other thing is, I haven't quite perfected this yet. So this is the lock unlock, and it's spring loaded. So the way that I've been doing it is just wedging a board in here pulling it down, wedging a board in, and then the trailer will load, pull the board out, and it springs back up into place once it's high enough. I'm not sure how to make it so that I don't need this. I still am kind of playing around with ideas in my head on that. I'd like to keep it very clean. One thing I regret not doing is backing this with another piece of metal. So now when you look at it, the R, the P, and the O are all blown out. This O stayed, go figure, that one blew out. Other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. One other thing I'd like to do before I call it completed for now is I'd like to just test the capacity of this back ramp while I'm sitting in my yard. I think what I'm going to do in order to test it is pull my truck up on there, my old 53, just the front, and then uh, see if it can lift that front up. So the process here is up, lift it up, and we gotta come down here and flip it into the unlock position. I don't know if you can see, but you can see those are now clipped down below the cross member. Now when it comes down, it's basically just going to push them. They are spring-loaded, like I mentioned. And now it's just a matter of hitting down. A 
Okay, let's put the truck on there. I thought we'd check and see what our angle was here, our load angle. What is that, about 13 degrees? So 13 degrees load angle. Well, it definitely sucked the juice right out of the battery, but it did it. And one other project I think that I'll tackle along with that spare tire is right here. So I have a solar maintainer that would fit perfectly on top of this box, but it seems like every trailer that I've seen with a solar maintainer on the toolbox, eventually it gets broken, cracked. So I'm thinking about building some type of really cool cage with expanded mesh and then possibly setting some load lights here along the back maybe two faced out each way towards the other trailer maybe two faced onto the deck of the trailer and then incorporate the uh, solar panel into that also along with an expanded mesh kind of guard over the top so those are two be continued projects 